The coroner tasked with investigating the death of Joyce Eshaquan has found racism and prejudice contributed to her death. Eshaquan, a mother of seven, died on September 28, 2020, at a hospital just north of Montreal. Moments after she recorded footage of herself in hospital as healthcare staff hurled racist remarks at her. Tuesday marked the one year anniversary of Eshaquan's death. A key recommendation in the Quebec coroner's report is for the provincial government to recognize systemic racism within its institutions. The report, conducted by Gayan Kamel, read, It is therefore my duty as coroner to do everything within my power to avoid having another member of the Indigenous community or any other origin receive care such as the kind that was offered to Miss Eshaquan. Brad Regeer is the former president of the Canadian Bar Association. He's a partner at Maurice Law in Winnipeg and joins us now. Brad, uh, thank you very much for um, making some time in your Friday afternoon. I know you've been following this case closely. The coroner's report states that while Joyce Eshaquan's death was ruled accidental, it also says racism and prejudice that Miss Eshaquan faced contributed to her death. Have you ever seen something like that before? And, and how significant is it? Well... Uh, thanks, David. Thanks for having me here. Uh, here in Winnipeg, we had an Indigenous man uh, die in the waiting room at the Health Sciences Centre after being uh, basically ignored for days. Uh, and he uh, he eventually passed away in the waiting room because people just assumed uh, things about him uh, because he was Indigenous and he didn't get the care that he needed and in the time that he needed and he passed away. So sadly, this is not the first time this has happened in Canada. And I, I do note from the coroner's report that had it not been for Joyce uh, uh, fa or, um, Facebook live recording, um, this probably wouldn't have come to light. Mm -hmm. what, one of the key recommendations in that report is for the Quebec government to recognize the existence of systemic racism uh, within its institutions. How does something like that move forward when the Premier of Quebec, Francois Legault, has denied the existence of systemic racism in Quebec. Well, I mean, first thing that's going to have to happen is the Premier and other leaders in Quebec are going to have to admit what is obvious and what has been well established. And it's not like Quebec is being picked on here. This has been well established through study after study after study that throughout Canada, we have issues of systemic racism towards Indigenous people. They've had reports in Quebec that have come to this conclusion, not just this coroner's report. So if the Premier wants to stick his head in the sand and pretend this is not as happening, well, then this issue is not going to move forward. The first thing, and I note that Coroner Kamal mentions, is that we need strong leadership. What is happening right now is not strong leadership. It is pretending that a problem which is well documented does not exist, and it exists. And, 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 and the premier needs to be a leader and go, we've got an ugly truth here, we're gonna address it. Instead, what he's doing is saying and pretending that it doesn't exist. Um, and, all, and all of this the day after um, uh, the first national day of truth and reconciliation. Indigenous leaders in Quebec drafted what became known as Joyce's Principle and a set of recommendations meant to, um, to guarantee health care for Indigenous people free of discrimination. But the province has refused to draft legislation that includes the tenets of that Joyce's Principle because that principle references systemic racism. From a legal perspective, what do you think it'll take to see change on that front? Or is it not a legal question at all? Well, you know, I'm legally trained. That's what I've done for my career. And, you know, certainly there could be civil litigation over this going through the courts. Um, again, I'm going to get back to this. this requires leadership. Step up and do the right thing and admit that there's a problem. You're not going to be the first jurisdiction to do this. The other jurisdictions have done this. Um, we've, you know, we had the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples 25 years ago come to these conclusions. It's not new. Uh, and it's not just limited to Quebec, it's across the country. Pretending that it doesn't exist doesn't help. So it really requires political leadership. I mean, I guess if they wanna go the, 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 the legal route, it can go that route. But that's not the way to resolve these issues. The, the real way to do this is to have, is to, is, to, is to show leadership, 
is to have the will to address this, is to is to engage in reconciliation. We've been talking about reconciliation for many years now. We've got a commission that tabled reports on this many years ago. We got a missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls report tabling tabling these issues. It's time to address them. It's time to acknowledge that they exist and move forward. Brad, I, I look at this coroner's report, um, and it's going to get a lot of headlines today. But of course, it, it, as it should. It only can look at those final moments of Joyce Eshaquan's life on this earth. And what her Facebook Live shows is that in those final moments, she had racist garbage being hurled at her by the very people who might have been able to perhaps save her life. Now, her death's been ruled accidental. But if I rewind here to the rest of Joyce Eshaquan's life, how do you see systemic racism having, been, having impacted her life and not just the circumstances around her death. Well, I, I, could, I could go, we could go on for hours and hours talking about the history of indigenous peoples within Canada and, and how they have been impacted. Uh, when, I, when I look at what happened to Joyce, first of all, she was a human being. It was horrific what happened to her. I've, 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 I've read the report now. I'm not a doctor or, or medically trained, but even in even being able to read it, it's awful what happened to her with her being restrained, being um, administered drugs that she probably didn't need, not getting the attention that she needed. Um, it, it, and, and what it appeared is that it was medical professional after medical professional made assumptions about her because she was indigenous. And, you know, we, we, the calls to action in the, in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission talked about these issues in the medical community. They talked about them in the justice system. It's unfortunately, our country has these issues overladen with it in so many areas. And it's it's time to start implementing those calls to action. It is time to engage in reconciliation. Again, pretending it doesn't exist is not reconciliation. Brad Regeer, thank you very much uh, for your thoughts, for your expertise on this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.